How are we doing, Thrivers? We are back and we are in our series, How to Do the Work. And we have four suggestions for doing that. We've already talked about getting distance. We've already talked about validating your reality. And we're going to move on to step three, which is going to be not to personalize the toxic junk that's being thrown at us and on us. Once we can stop personalizing most of it, we can slide right off our back and we can move on in our day in peace. So as Brittany would say, work it out, work it out, work it out. And we're going to do just that today. Before we get started, I do have a brief safety announcement having to do with Thrive the Matrix. If you are a subscriber or have seen it before, we use a chapter skip function to bypass it. If you are brand new here, I want some reminders. Definitely stick around for that minute and a half. And uh, from there, we'll get started with the topic. We would like to begin today by thanking our Thriver Medallion members, our subscribers and early adopters, anyone revisiting this channel, having watched previous content, and brand new viewers. We hope you enjoyed today's content and this announcement was made especially for you. Before we begin, if you want to bypass this announcement, if you've already heard it, please use the channel marker function in YouTube to do so. With that, I'll begin by saying that any persons or scenarios discussed on this channel are not based on any specific real persons or scenarios and are anecdotal only. I am not a clinician. I am not a psychologist, psychiatrist, therapist, although I am a certified professional in life and happiness coach. And for that reason on this channel, we always theorize we do not have the right to diagnose and we will absolutely never theranose. With that, we'd ask you to remain seated until the end of the video. We do strive to make them short and to the point and valuable in respect for your time, especially when the stick around sign is illuminated. For most of the content on this channel, it's important to note you may only be able to assist yourself and you'll likely want to always assist yourself before assisting others. In the likely case of an emergency because life is not fair, please know that you always have an exit using the resources and tools you'll develop on this channel and others like it. With that, we are expecting clear skies today and wish that for you every day regardless of what the weather says. And I would invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's topic. So if you stuck around for those safety announcements, I hope you got some reminders on who we are as a channel and the support that we provide. From there, let's get right to it. We aim to make videos that are short and sweet for you. So I've got three things to consider when it comes to not personalizing uh, toxicity. And the first one is recognizing the difference between being guilty of something or guilt and shame. And I believe this definition came from Brene Brown. Uh, not the scenario, not the insight, but just really the, the definitions to kind of kicked us off. And the first one is that guilt is I did something bad and shame is I am something bad. So there's an, an important distinction there. We know that the controls in our lives are filled with shame. So when we understand the difference between guilt and shame, we can go a long way toward not personalizing their comments. So guilt is I did something bad and we all have guilt from time to time. We all make mistakes. And then we also have shame, which is I am something bad. So if you are being talked to in a way that's making you feel shameful, making something you did or did not do about something inherently bad or defective about yourself, then that's usually a sign someone's taking the opportunity to unload some of that toxic shame. Or you're being engaged in a way that makes sense, that is healthy. So I'll give you an example. So let's say that little Johnny was asked to take out the trash. And uh, his parent, mom or dad, whoever that might be, you know, gets home at the end of the day and realizes that Johnny did not, uh, did not take out the trash. Or take in the trash, whichever is that, whichever one I said it was going to be. Um, in this case, the parent uh, walks into the house and sees Johnny on his phone and is a little bit irritated, or a lot irritated, that that trash wasn't taken out. And here he sits on his phone. Here's the difference between how that could be handled in a healthy way, and then we're going to follow that with an example of how it might be handled in a non-healthy way. That's something that Johnny should not personalize or that we should not personalize. So how does this sound? Or you tell me which script 
is more in line with I did something bad or didn't do something I should have or I am something bad or I am something I shouldn't be. The first, uh, the first script. Hey Johnny, I noticed I asked you to take the trash out um, today or take the trash in and I see it's still sitting in or out and yet you're on your phone. You know, I asked you, you said yes, you made a commitment. That's part of taking responsibility. So, you know, why don't you put the phone down for a minute and uh, go, go take in <laughs> or out the trash. How, do, how does that sound? Does that sound like we're holding somebody accountable for not doing something or unloading toxic shame on them? Let's compare it with this example. You know what, Johnny? I just, I, the minute I walk in the house, I can see that you didn't take the trash out, bring it in. And, you know, I can see that, you know, here you are on your phone. You know, it's so typical of you. You know, the unreliability, you know, I ask you to do one thing, you can't even do that right. And just the pure selfishness. You know, I've spent the whole day working, working my butt off. So you can sit on that phone right now and, and hear you have the audacity to be as selfish as you are by not doing something that you said that you would do. It, it's just, it's, you're just unreliable. You can't be trusted. And it's just selfishness and it's unacceptable. Get, get the trash, take it out. Now, is it reasonable to say that any of us could be Johnny and maybe there was something important on the phone or maybe we got caught up in a conversation or maybe we said, hmm, I just got home, let me get settled. I will uh, attend to that. And then we got distracted. Does that really make us unreliable? Does that mean that we're selfish? Does that mean that we can't be trusted? I think those are very strong you know, words to use in a situation like this. And they're really indicative of a personal quality about yourself as opposed to you just simply making a mistake. Now Johnny walks away feeling like not only did he not do something he was supposed to do, but there's something bad about him that made that happen. That's not going to hold up in a court of law. So if someone's making it personal and, and it's something inherently bad about you, don't. if it doesn't apply like we say, let it fly. Okay? The second example um, that I wanted to talk about is just plain old projection. So I think it's, it's kind of funny because I think the controllers in our lives, those we think can be narcissistic, those that have been diagnosed with MPD by a clinician, you know, they have very fragile egos and they have to uphold these egos by taking any imperfection they feel they have and really putting that on somebody else. And they have to do that because if they were to acknowledge that the way they feel could be part of their reality, and it's really not the shame here, and I think I've said this in another video, as none of us should have to carry all the shame around, but they'd have to deal with it one way or another, and it's just easier to put it onto somebody else, right? And I think what gets a little bit a little bit dicey about this one is that sometimes their projections can, because they seem omnipotent or all-knowing, there could be kernels of truth to them, but that could also be true of really everybody or anybody. And so it can make you think that, wow, they're spot on with exactly who I am. I have to believe this. No, no, that doesn't, that doesn't hold water. So when this happens, when this projection happens, it's really hard for us to realize that this person does not have perfect information about us, is not omnipotent, but they do know themselves pretty well, even if they're not going to acknowledge it. But next time you have some toxic shame dumped on you, think of the source. And think about maybe trying to find some evidence to substantiate that they might be projecting some of their negative qualities onto you. It makes it about them and it makes it easier for you to not personalize it. Listen to it, let it come in one ear, go out the other, and move on. Right? Just good old projection. The last one I want to talk about is the Darbo method, right? And as I was writing up like a loose script for this video, I, I don't even know if this is a thing, but I almost came up with my own quote. And the only way a guilty man can prove his innocence or put a focus on his innocence is by making someone else look guilty of something worse. And I think that's what happens with Darbo, which if we remember is when you try to hold them accountable and they will deflect uh, they will attack and then they will reverse the victim and offender roles, right? They take what you were holding them accountable for, put that on steroids, and then 
flip that back on you with some egregious episode that was probably less not egregious at all to take the focus off of what they're doing wrong and make you walk away feeling like you're at fault really you're gonna tell me that i was a little bit quiet and standoffish at dinner if you want to talk about quiet and standoffish let's let's back up a minute back up a minute forget about that forget about that we're gonna talk about being a little bit quiet and standoffish i'd like you to explain to me how you were on that vacation those two days where I, I barely heard a word from you, you know, you were ignoring family members, just weren't engaged, you weren't plugged in, you weren't involved, you know, and that was that was a really special time for a lot of people, and and, and and you had to ruin it. So don't talk to me about, you know, looking standoffish or being quiet. You know, doing that for one dinner because I have a lot of stress, have a lot going on right now, and. In fact, I think I was pretty engaged in the conversation. There's nothing compared to, you know, moping about for two days on a vacation with everybody wondering what's wrong with you. You know, if any anybody needs to look within to fix being standoffish, <laughs> I would say you have more to look at than I do. Right? So there you go. And in order for them to not be held accountable now, they have to dump some toxic shame on you for something that happened in the past that has to be more severe or has to be for a longer duration, or has to be more intense, or has to be more impactful than you know what you're asking them about or what you're holding them accountable for. You probably may have just said, hey, I noticed you're a bit quiet during dinner, a little bit standoffish, and usually like eating with the Smiths. You know, what gives for you to get that Darbo effect? And now here you are ruminating about a vacation that you took two years ago. If you know there was no malintent behind, well, first of all, I wouldn't even enter, forget that. I wouldn't even entertain whatever happened on that vacation because if you do, then you're falling for the Darbo method and they've managed to deflect and get your focus back on something wrong with you rather than, hold, rather than holding them accountable for something they clearly did. So just remember, when the Darbo method needs to be used, it's not going to be used lightly and they're going to come out guns blazing. You definitely don't want to personalize that, especially if you are acting in good faith and just asking them a simple question or holding them accountable for something that's really not that serious. So there you have it, folks. We want to make sure that we can tell the difference between when somebody is asserting our guilt and having a reasonable response or indicating instead of us doing something bad, that we are something bad by making our mistakes something inherently wrong with us. If that's the case, we definitely don't want to personalize that. Uh, the second is projection. So if you can find evidence that what someone's saying is not true of you, how would they know it's true of you? They don't know everything. They wouldn't know those details. Of course, especially if you know they don't know those details. Um, can you find more evidence of it being true for them than you can of you? And finally, when they use the Darbo method, they're not going to use that lightly, and you can expect them to make whatever crime you committed 10 times worse than whatever you're talking to them about. None of that should be personalized, and none of it should be explained, especially if you explained it at the time where it's an irrational reaction to reasonable behavior back on that vacation. So that'll be the focus of the Thriver Ties that you're going to complete at thrivethematrix.com. It's going to be on our Do the Work page. The goal is for you to go and complete this module in addition to the other two that are already posted. We will then do our fourth video in the series, which is Radical Acceptance. You will complete a Thriver Size for that. This is all free while this program is being completed. Once this video series has ended, it will move on to a paid page. Uh, since you're watching in real time as it's being uh, developed, the programs will always be free. So that's why you want to subscribe to this channel. Like this content ensures it's pushed out to others that may benefit from it. It makes sure it shows up in your feeds and it makes sure that you get these lessons, this advice, these thriver sizes, these concepts for free before they go on sale or before they're offered um, at a going rate. Anyway, thrivers, just remember what they say most times has more to do with them than it does with you. As far as I'm concerned, until next time, Stay up.